Oh, I screwed up. I walked past and my ankle sideswiped a battery and it, it really hurts. Hi everybody, good day to you and welcome back. If this is your first time here, just welcome. I'm glad you're here. I know I'm glad to be here. This is a 2007 Volkswagen Jetta 2.5 liter. Another manual shifting transmission. It's my second Volkswagen this week. This particular VW has 145,212 miles on the odometer. Uh, customer states, check the brakes. Uh, they think the right rear caliper is hanging up. It makes a noise when you release it. Mm, I don't hear that. I'm not hearing anything out of the right rear just yet. Okay. We're gonna need some clickage here to start with. We're headed off to take our preliminary test drive. It seems that I have lost a scene that contains me rambling on about brakes and a lack of pulsation. So let's just go ahead and fast forward midway through the test drive. Uh, one more braking event to a full stop. I didn't feel any pulsation at lower speeds either. That's good. Okie dokes. Let's get this little farfic nougat up in the air and take a look at her nether regions. Popping in, Z-Hoid. Well, I can't see anything with this cover in the way, so let's make this go away. Easier said than done. Oh, this is the whole intake, isn't it? Yeah, that cover is not just a cover. Oi! Alright. Well, some disassembly required. Yeah, let's just get right to the reach around phase here and disconnect that. Now I should be able to pull this unit out. Should. Come here. It's stuck. There we go. Wow. Hot. Hot. We're looking pretty good in here. We noticed one interesting and unique feature about this particular Volkswagen is it's a five cylinder. Count the coils. Yeah, looking good. We've had some crispy critters in here. Hey look, it's another one of those green subscribe buttons. Beginning wheel disassembly procedure now. going on here hmm very very thin rear pads they're not gone yet but they're not not the greatest about three millimeters looking like oh these are actuated calipers you can see here that the caliper is hydraulically actuated and it has a cable for the parking brake so when you pull the cable it squeezes the pads when you hit the pedal it sends hydraulic pressure in also squeezes the pads it's a way to get two functions out of one singular component. That way we don't have to have park and brake shoes and a service brake. We can just have a service brake with an integrated parking brake. Very clever. Let's see, moving around to the left rear. Uh, we're in similar shape, about three millimeters, maybe four. Uh, the inboard, never mind, that inboard pad. We're down to one millimeter, maybe even less see it right right there yeah that pad's gone all right left front that's a five or a six that one's good uh the inboard we're gonna call that a actually that's quite thick on that inboard pad it's like an eight Let's check the right front And we're calling that one a six. And we're calling that one an eight. Okay. We do have a fairly decent lip worn onto these fronts as well. Okay. Now, realistically, I'm gonna say we can uh, we can put pads on the rear, machine the rotors, and then uh, maybe something similar to the front. I can I can recommend it. Well, it 
if we service anything, it'll be pads and machine, uh, probably all the way around. The rears are a little bit more critical at this point than the fronts are. They're quite a bit lower, especially that left rear. So these ones are gonna take priority and then the front ones. So we'll do pads, machine, and suggest pads and machine on the front ones if they would like to do the fronts. So options, we have options here. I like to give out options. One super common failure point for some of these Volkswagens are the uh, the bushings for the lower control arms. They like to tear. This is all rubber right around through here. And uh, over time that stuff uh, weakens and it starts to tear away. And then the control arm will flippity flop around and make a bunch of noises. Uh, we do not have that condition present on this car at this time, so this is good. We can see a little bit of tearing starting to occur right here, but that's nothing major. It's uh, nowhere near the point where a replacement would be required. Not yet. Yeah, this thing's actually pretty clean. Tires are in good shape too. We'll give our guy a call and see what we're gonna do. Stay tuned. Ah, uh, looky what I found. I was doing a light check on it and I found that the, these front markers are inoperative. You see there's supposed to be a bulb right there. Let us, uh, let's see if I can't dig that guy out of there and see if it's the bulb or not. Let's find out. I brought two bulbs with me, just in case. Um, no. Become detached, please. All right, well, if I can't get the light off, I'll just take the lens out. That's what I'll do. I'll just pop that guy right out of there. I didn't get very far, did I? That's no good, but that's okay. I brought a new one. Let there be light. Uh, negative, no light. There it is. Lens gravity. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Lumens. There we go. Now we're looking like what we're supposed to be looking like. Now it's more safer. -er. Let's do the other side too. Well, I'm not reaching through the wheel well to get that one, am I? Oh wait, no, no, I can see. I can see a piece of it way back there. I'm, I'm going in. I don't know if I can reach it, but I'm gonna try. If I can get my finger on that tab, I'll, I can pop it out. And, let's see, I think I got it. <laughs> I got it. Here, hold this. Thank you. That's all. Victory. I'm gonna stay holding this all day. Yeah, you just hold it all day. Like, that's what I want you to do, just all day. If somebody asks you to do something, you're like, I can't. I'm holding this. Yeah, just do that. Okay, let's shut all this off before I kill our battery here. Powering down. We're gonna end up doing uh, pads and rotors on this thing. Uh, we are gonna replace the rotors. You heard me mention earlier that uh, these are machinable, which they are. Uh, however, they're going to be replaced because uh, as the numbers work out, it's actually more cost effective to replace these rotors than it is to machine them. So we're just gonna put new ones on. So if we move around to the back side of this caliper, you can see we've got, we've got one caliper bolt here, one more right here, and then we'll get the caliper off of its bracket. Now there's not much space back here to tinker with, especially on this bottom one. So I'm just gonna pull all this stuff apart uh, manually with my ratcheting wrench. You know, I'm starting to think the hardest part about this whole job is going to be the lighting. See, there's a whole lot of light behind us. It's a little late in the day. And we're looking into a dark area right here, so it's really, really hard to see what we're doing. It's even harder to see what we're doing on camera. But I have lots and lots of LEDs. We'll figure it out. With great efficiency as well. 
And I said it. There's my jinx. Ruh row. That's nasty. Look at that one. Razor thing. What are you babbling about? This one's even worse right here, this inner. We almost went metal to metal. Almost. And it wasn't even uh, riding evenly. You can see the bottom is a little bit thicker than the top part of it. See that? It was time. Caliper, go over there and stay there for a minute. We don't need you. Let's go ahead and get this bracket removed next. And lucky for me, it's uh, held together with triple square fasteners, which I happen to have a set of triple squares. They're uh, named such because they are shaped out of three squares. This is an ATD kit. I bought this years ago and I rarely used it, but then all of a sudden I find myself using it all the time. Uh, anyway, uh, it is uh, part number ATD13782. Um, in case you guys are interested, I will look for an Amazon link for these. And uh, if I find one, I'll post it down in this video's description. That way, if you want some, you don't have to hunt it down. Because I did the work for you. That one's tight. It's not going in. I think that's the one. Does it fit down there? Yeah, it fits that one. Okay, this has got to be the right one. It does fit. It's pretty tight though. But it works. It's a M14. That's the size. These pair nicely with electric ratchets. Like cheese and wine. First click action. Yeah. There it is. Flashlight. See the female side of the fastener? Triple square. You love them or you hate them. Most of us hate them. We don't know why we hate them. Maybe because, uh, Many folks see them as unnecessary because there's already plenty of fasteners that can do the same job. We don't need special fasteners. Plus, look at this one. This thing is all stripped out and chewed up on the inside. See, now I gotta use a pry hammer. Good, yeah, it still fits. As long as I don't round it off any further, should be all right. Reverse clickage. Of course, it's over tight. What? Come on. No. Uh oh. Do do do. Not right now. My electric ratchet was flexing too much, and the body was hitting this control arm. So let's get a smaller tool in there. We'll use the smaller tool first to get everything loosened up, and then we'll go in and finish the job with the bigger tool. Safest way to do this. Come on. There we go. Yeah, now we're cooking here. Everything is a hammer. When your hammer is far away. All right, it's out. Let's go fetch the bracket. There she is. Hmm. Slide pins are super dry. That might've been the noise they were hearing. Slide pins, flippy flopping around. Come on, rotor. We're going in the trash. 
Hmm, what is this I see? A bunch of buildup on the wheel speed sensor. Can't have that. Make it nice and shiny. Beautiful. Rotary shiny. I can do this all day. Okay, enough screwing around. Let's get back to work. Let's go pull that other side apart. Give me back my socket. Yeah, it's a little buggered up. It's okay, it survived. It's reusable. To the other side. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Keep them tool carts rolling. Okay, two more caliper bolts. <laughs> Need to be careful. I actually cut my thumb yesterday pretty bad at home. And I don't want to contaminate it. Yeah, it's got a... I know you can see. Yeah, you can see it. I cut it on one of those... Uh, cutting clamp devices for a PCB pipe. I actually had the thing sitting down on the ground and I went to reach past it to grab something else and I ran my thumb down the blade. It was like, it was a one in a million chance of doing what I did and I did it. Oh, and it was, it was bad. It was a very, very red afternoon. And again, triple square, same story on the caliper bolts. Oh. I neglected to remove the pads for inspection, for closer inspection. Yeah, we got three to four millimeters on that one. And uh, this one, what do we got here? About the same, maybe four. Moving on. Reverse clickage. Oh, nope, nope, nope. Same story as the first one. Too much flexing, not enough leverage. Oh, come on. Yeah, let's wiggle it again until it fits. There we go. Nice, loose. Uh oh. Alright. Let's go and fetch that bracket. I always put these guys back, these little set screws. A lot of folks don't put them back. I, I like them to be there, so I put them back. Oh no! Another non-shiny wheel speed sensor. Right there, look at that. Can't have that. And I choose left front, driver's side. Hello, shop decoration Jaguar. Train wreck. Yeah, I think we're too close here. We're a little too close. There. Here, let's get these anti-rattle clips out of here. These things stick into holes in the caliper and then they put some pressure against the caliper bracket 
That way the caliper can't flip you floppy around all willy-nilly like. It suppresses noise. Here, let's give this a turn. Or not. Okay, let's give this a turn so we can better access our work here. There we go. There's two bolts that hold this caliper to the bracket. They are under these covers. And I believe they're a, a Torx or a, a hex drive. Let's see, I got a Torx 40 here. That's a negative. Let's try the Torx 50 or 45. Yeah, 45, that's the one. We'll come back and we've done in two days. I think the evaporator's leaking. You saw that die down there by the drain. Yep. Reverse click. Caught that one. Screw you, gravity. Come off, please. That lip on the rotor is catching the pads. We'll just open this caliper up a wee bit. There it is. Oh look, Volkswagen figured out how to run a wire to a brake pad. And I'm not kidding. Here, let's just get that little guy disconnected. We don't need that on there. Okay, and what do we need, a 22? Yes. All right, 22 coming in, loud noises. Wrong way. Uh, become unstuck. Okay. I happen to have motivators for such situations here. Okay, so far so good. I'm just gonna hang this caliper so it can't fall down and break the hose and we'll go over to the other side. Just assemble one more corner. All right, three down, one to go, then we're halfway done. Here's that flashlight. Let's get our little clip out of here. Um, try not to ruin these if you take them out because uh, sometimes you have to reuse them. Sometimes your pad set comes with new ones. Flashlight. Sometimes it doesn't, so I just hang on to them until later, uh, just in case. Because you can't let it roll without the clip. It will make noise. Ow! Run them I don't know what that means. Uh, oh, you had to order some more refrigerant? Bet you five bucks they order you one of those little cans. How, how funny, how funny would that be if they ordered a can? Really? That shouldn't even be here. In fact, those R134 cans shouldn't even exist. I have to ask that. You beat the R112s in for the old cars. Yeah. Well, the way I see it, why do I have to go get a license to handle refrigerant when anybody can just walk into Walmart and buy it off the shelf and then poke a hole in the can and let it all vent out anyway? Where's Greta Thornburg when we need her? <laughs> It's Thornburg, right? That climate change chick.
please come off nicely. It's not listening to me. Tried to warn you. Alright, progress has been made. Hey, there's no wheel speed sensor right there. Alrighty, brake parts have arrived. I want to go ahead and just uh, hit the surface with a wire wheel just to knock off any imperfections that might be there and then we'll move on to reassembly. our new rotor right now. It's covered in oil so it doesn't rust. There we go. Stay. I can't use my right thumb. I cut it the other day and uh, the brake clean will make it burn. Click. Let's go ahead and get the caliper bracket in. Oh, I missed it twice. Something's not right. What's going on here? Hang on, hang on. We have problems. We have wrong rotor. That's the problem. Here, we've got the wrong rotor here. See, I've got the hat of this rotor sitting on top of the edge of the new one. They don't make contact here. This rotor is a larger diameter. I should have checked that first. Silly Ray. Yeah, check this out. Fail. Wrong one. Try again. All right, figure that out. So the front rotors that I have are not the right ones, but the rear rotors that I have are the right ones. So uh, we can just come back here and do the rears. Okay, same procedure. And the caliper too while we're at it. Another! So you guys remember me mentioning earlier that these were called actuated calipers. You cannot depress these like a normal caliper. You actually have to rotate this piston as it depresses. And there's a special tool for such things. We've got the flat flange here, which is gonna act against these fingers on the caliper. Then we're gonna hold this flange stationary with this large nut and then turn. Oh, it's a little bound up, hang on, there we go. And then we're gonna turn the shaft and that's going to run in because it's threaded and it's also going to engage the piston on the caliper, rotate it and press it in simultaneously. Quite a nifty little device. There are other more simple devices than this one, like the cube, for example. This is just the one I happen to have. So we're gonna hold the large nut stationary, rotating the shaft, and then it's going to turn in 
and press the piston. If I can hold it. See it right there, there it goes. Ah, loud screechy noises. And there it goes. All right, I think that's about it. Let's go ahead and back this off. And make sure that the uh, piston is flush. And it looks good. Caliper bracket time. Let us uh, prep these calipers real quick while they're still here on the little bench. We're gonna pull the shims off because my pad set has new shims and we're gonna re-grease the slide pins too. Also, I wanna hit these with a wire brush real quick just to knock out any debris that's uh, hanging out right here in these channels. There, that's a shiny. A little bit of rust in there. Let's get rid of that. Good. Nasty. Yeah, that's old crusty grease right there. We don't need that. purple so you know it's good Nice and lubricated. <sighs> Slide pins are so often overlooked. All right. Okie dokes, now we're free to hang this caliper bracket. So we're gonna get this in position and uh, I'm gonna scooch around over here. We'll get this the old uh, Erico style reach around and get these bolts in right here. I got one. Number two. Right. Two bolts started. Alright, back down in her nether regions again. Oh, wrong way. Wrong way, Ratchet. Our right, new no. reverse click. Here we go, final torque on the triple square. Slip clickage. That's a new one. There we go. All right, let's get out of here and hang the pads. All right, we have a set of pads and shims. How's this one go? Yeah, I got it backwards and flippy floppy. Not cool. There. All right, both pads in. Let's hang our caliper. 
And that's in with uh, two bolts. Two manual bolts, because I can't fit any power tools in that tight little space. Begin threading now, please, last bolt. There we go, all right. There. Good. Okay, let's swing her over to the right rear and repeat. I'm gonna skip the part where I compress the caliper because it can get uh, boring. And I don't wanna bore you guys because then you'll leave my video and then that's not good for me or my video. We don't want that. Okay, the bracket is shimmed, lubed, and prepped. Let's get this guy bolted in. This should end up being the last reach around of the day. I can't see. Yeah, you're There's no crying in automotive. There's no crying. I know this. Got it. All right, electronic clicks. One more turn. And clickage got it all right back around on this side we're going in with two pads again if i can line them up come here nice and of course two bolts Mac? You mean Mac Co? Mac. I have never seen a Mac tool truck come here. Really? Nope. Oh. I've never seen Mac come over here. Mac isn't really anywhere. I mean, I know they exist, but they're like a unicorn. They only exist in legend. clickage all right rear brakes are done let's do the fronts okay let's uh let's try this again we got a new one okay we're back at the left front remember how we left because we had the wrong rotor okay let's see if this bracket's gonna fit now it's already been brushed off and we fit flawlessly this is good loud noises headphone warning Click. New one, a new new one. caliper you're coming with me We've got to fit our pad uh, where is that pad there it is this pad has a wear indicator built into it oh I had it myself what have I done we need to compress our piston Go back. Come 
These clips sit inside of the piston to retain the pad. And then the outboard pad slips in like so. What? Yeah. Oh, hang on. Spare that, guys. Team summoned. Okay, I'm back. So I'm taking care to make sure that this wire stays right here so I can plug it back in. And we're just going to slip the caliper over the other pad and line up the pins. Now let's try this one. There we go. Gravity. Anyway, it's critical that we start these by hand. The threads were very thin on the bracket and we do not want to cross thread these and strip those because then I have to buy a new bracket. And I don't want to buy a new bracket. Click. Double click. And we won't forget the little caps that cover those up. Okay, now right here, we've got our plug. So, we just need to connect that and we're golden here. Then we'll go over and finish up the other side. Flickage. All right, boys, one more to go and this section is complete. All right, let's get out of here. Turn of loud noises. with our big clips. It's hard to do with a cut thumb. this out some the threads are out past where the uh, the hole is on the caliper or on the caliper bracket there we go try again all right back on the schedule fix And I do have my little plastic caps here. Those go back. Those prevent moisture ingress. 
go. Let's get our little clip in and that's gonna probably be a wrap for this video. I think we're running out of time. I do uh, have some other work to do on this car. I believe I'm gonna be doing that engine oil pan to fix that leak. If I do, I'll probably make a second video on that so you can expect that in the future. Until then, as always, like thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, you know the drill. Let me know about that by tapping that like button down below. If you did not enjoy this video, I'll try better next time. So again, and as always, thank you for watching. And most importantly, don't forget to have yourself a great day. See you guys later.